Thank you all. Wow, what a great introduction right there. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I've been all over the place. After a year and a half of uh, absolutely close restaurant, so I can be more excited. I think I have to do it to save my ass off in a way. Anyways, this great song. Um, so I, I brought, I brought um, a lecture. I wanted to read a piece that, um, that I prepared for all of you guys. And um, okay, so here we go. I think I will talk about my experience in my whole country, in the South South, and what happened there with my restaurant. I'm not coming from a gastronomic restaurant, uh, I mean, from a gastronomic country where the food used not to be important at all, as in most of the Latin American region, probably. Uh, you would never ever would travel to Chile to eat. Maybe um, just some other things, you know, whatever you wanted to go to Chile to, but never to eat. Um, by the way, did I say that my, my family from my mother's side, it comes from the area. Isn't it funny that, that I'm talking about food in, in this land? I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I, pe I picked a few sentences about this famous song. That I really like. When, when Andy told me, I, I said, like, oh, I don't know that song. But I recognized it afterwards when I listened to it. And I, um, so I picked a few, few, few sentences. My back is broad enough, uh, but it's hurting. I've walked, I've walked for miles. Am I rough enough? I'm not too blind to see. I never be your piece of burden. I like to add a few sentences on this song, so I'll call Rolling Stones tomorrow and uh, and ask them. I'm pretty sure they'll be cool with it. Um, I wanted to share this story with you guys, and I like to call it um, "Under the Tablecloth." Yeah, because under the tablecloth. Many things are happening in a restaurant. Um, under the tablecloth, many things are cooking. Yeah. So I might tell you this story of love under the tablecloth. I have four children. That's right. Two girls, two boys. And I've, I've been married with my baby for the last 14 years. And sure, there's many restaurants around the world that have been able to man to generate so many great things for the for the many people you know around the countries. It's, as in, you know, Anna Ross does in here. And I I like I like to call these things under the tablecloth for today. Uh, there's something I've, I've learning during all of these years. And it's an incredible changes that humans, we can produce within a great community. It's this, as this industry has. And this is a great example of passion in this world. As those forces are moving us, uh, coming from, from our guts. Perhaps I, I truly believe that all changes in this world are possible, especially coming from this great community, is a great example to the world. Um, talking about sustainability, which is a, a word that uh, I truly, honestly, I don't really understand because uh, it has many faces, you know. Um, anyways, I'm taking you guys back to 2000, back into 2012. 
Six years of running an empty restaurant. Um, finally, in a bankruptcy. So in my case, I'm not having a partner. I'm not coming from a family. I'm not saying that is good or, good or wrong. It's just my reality. Um, trying to sell a restaurant for five times already. Very frustrated, by the way. I couldn't do it. Uh, so the man in this room is... The man in this room is saying, hey, I'm going to Chile to see your restaurant. And I'm like, really? Then he asking, he's asking um, if I know him. And I said, I, I thought, of course I know you. There's not a single chef in the world at that time that wouldn't know him. Um, So, okay, so it's Andrea Petrini showing up into the dining room. And um, after the meal, he's saying, oh, wow, this is very special. Uh, and very different, by the way. I've never seen these ingredients, and that one and this one. And you know what? Um, your restaurant deserves to be visited by... Uh, everyone coming from different countries in the world. And I'm like, yes, sure. <laughs> so time, time after he came, many things are happening, you know. I started to see some curious people traveling from different countries as well. Um... um Is it, um, someone said at that time afterwards, um, do you know this, this thing called the World 50 Best? He said, that, yes, of course, I know it. There's going to be a version in Latin America. And of course, I was trying to sell the restaurant. Yeah, you understand. Um, it was uh, facing not, not the greatest time times on earth uh, as a personal one. So I was trying to get, a, get rid of this thing. So I said, like, good, fantastic. So you have to come, Rodolfo. You have to go to, to, to Peru. It was 2013. But then I was, I was in serious trouble. And um, so... I said, like, I'm not coming. It's not my, it's not my thing. It makes no sense for me to go there. I need to sell my restaurant. So, uh, they're saying, you know what? I've heard that the restaurant, uh, that your restaurant is going to be very high on the list. I said, like, okay, fine, fantastic. Um, my wife insisted. You better get your ass in the plane and you go in there. So guess what I did? You know, I did that. It was truth. So I'm having a call, I'm having a call from Diego still working with us after I don't know how many years. Um, saying, dude, get your ass here. We're in trouble. The rest is fully booked within a month. It's impossible to get a chair or a reservation within a month. I said, like, that's impossible. Yesterday, the restaurant was empty. It's like, yeah, we need you. So we went there. And um, I'm, you know, I was showing up to the reservation every every single day within the next three months to see if this will disappear, you know, because it was like part of my dreams or something. So, Diego was grabbing from my neck. He's grabbing, grabbing myself and saying like, I don't want to see you anymore in this office. Please leave. You got me sick. It won't disappear. It won't disappear, but the restaurant already changed. 
So you have to accept it and do what you got to do. So I went to cook. So that day I understood that my job since then, it was very simple to cook and to do what I love the most. Um, since the very beginning of the restaurant, you know, we were asking people, local people, to grab this very unique ingredients growing in the middle of nowhere, you know, in places that, that no one else grab, grab foods. Um, of course, in very small amounts, because now there was not much people coming to see us. So it was more like a favor rather than anything. But um, the problem is that they were growing in very short windows of time, you know? So it would take us a long time to learn. Um, anyways, we start making notes so we don't forget. And I'm talking about back into 2007. We didn't want it to be documenting this documenting guys or whatever you wanted to call it. Uh, but we had a need. We knew fucking nothing about our terra. So we really need to learn to feel Chileans, you know? A little bit, at least. And it was so obvious. We needed to use the original ingredients. Um... So back then, when the restaurant exploded, I said, like, oh, no, we, ha we almost have a dictionary. Almost like in a bipolar way, we never, we never stopped to learn. I don't know how and why, but, well, it happened what it happens. So in a way, we were ready for that day. In a way, we were categorizing and classifying the entire territory with eyes of food and... Finally, um, we, could, we could say that we, we started to cook Chilean food, you know, as our natives did for many years, uh, with these original ingredients, adopting these cooking methods with, with lots of imagination and originality. Of course, it was our aiming. So that time... Uh, we had already more than 200 people behind the restaurant between foraging communities and small producers from the entire country. Um, but suddenly, we started creating something that is very relevant for us to nowadays, and I love this keyword. I call it knowledge. And we never had that before. At that time, one ingredient meant one possibility and we were happy about, nothing to concern for. We, Chile is one of the biggest endemic countries around the world, so that's good. Uh, nowadays, one ingredient means at least 300 possibilities, so this for us is like a, literally like a renaissance, you know? We never thought, we never dream of discovering all of these things that, by the way, are very delicious. If you never, if you never been, go there, it's super close, you know? Chile is just, right, just around the corner. Um, so, anyways, after all of this, um, after all of these years, we thought that the best thing ever it was the um, the restaurant, but it wasn't. It was that keyword, the knowledge. So we opened this research center in 2019, um, at the beginning of 2019, so that's nothing. Uh, and so we created, uh, we discovered many things in terms of uh, possibilities. We start, um, so we develop four lines of work for the restaurant and seaweed. So we have more than 700 kinds of seaweed there. And it could be, of course, an incredible thing for, for Chile and rock plants. So if you look on the coast, on the map, um, you have, you have uh, 
these fully covered rock plants that could represent easily the, the future for the agriculture. 38% um, protein, beautiful taste, amazing stuff. Small fish, Chileans, we never use them for human consumption. We contaminating the sea and and yeah, so with using this small fish for f f feeding some salmons, which it makes no sense. So we discover beautiful things. And the fungi world, of course, the fault line of work. So it's, it's not only the mushrooms that your eyes can see, but the ones that your eyes are enabled to see. So if I take you to the native Chilean forest and drag your fingers into the, these leaves, you taste it, you won't believe it, how beautiful and delicious it is. Um, anyways. The thing is, uh, we've been insisting over and over and over again to bring ingredients overseas into our territories to make them grow as an equation, to sell it, to export it, you know, as a great equation. And, you know, we all, we, everyone, everybody, you know, had a little taste of what, what is this happening, you know, right now. The, uh, the weather is changing drastically. So we're facing two serious troubles. Um, less water on this planet Earth and lots of big, big population to feed. And I don't know, but I think I feel that, that in Chile at least we might have to organize the food in a very different way. In a very, very different way. Um, so we cannot grow no longer this, this, this species that requires a lot of water. Maybe within the next future, we're gonna have to, to uh, grow seaweeds, I don't know. Rock plants, seems they need less water, no water almost, and they grow also in huge amounts of water. Um, yeah, so for me, Three things are very relevant uh, to understand who you are, where you're coming from, and what you got around. It could be a key thing to 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 face the, the things that we're going to face within the next few years. Restaurants, we're going to have to cook in our very own way, not to look into some other restaurants and that, that are doing really good in some other places of the world, but based on your own thing and, and be based... On, on this unique, very unique food. Um, so, I don't know, I just want to share this, this story that, that ended up on, on something that I, we, we're pushing. I, I, would, I really wanted to share with you guys. Um, we, um, we in Chile have lots of protected species. Um, they, Supposedly, you cannot take out of the uh, forest, but you know, we, we're not listening no longer the territories. So, we have to domesticate many of these species, probably as a carrot. Carrot used to be a, 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 a species that it was wild, and we make it edible for many, many people. And we, we're going to have to find our own way. To, to make it happen in restaurants, I think, I think we have to rethink what we're cooking. And at the end of the day, we, we can make it taste good. That's no, no doubt. So, um, yeah, I wanted to say that, uh, yeah. Under the cloth, this is our story. And next time you hear one of these great restaurants is uh, Anna Ross, uh, I like to call under the cloth, under the cloth of the table thing. So thank you. <laughs>